All right, so we live. Give me a second. <clears throat> All right, we're going to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh. It's a double honor to the apostles and the elders at Great Millstone for teaching his word of truth and sincerity and for ruling well. And salutations to our fellow Akim across the four corners of the globe, preaching in the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Hey, this is the brother Gabar Yahweh. The brother Zahab. Don, and we're two of the brothers from GMS Hawaii. And uh, we just got together real quick to do this uh sit down on the draft man today's or tonight's uh live lesson is entitled uh uh the draft is coming back man and uh and it was inspired because you know uh, today well yesterday well today the third of january 2020 the year of prophecy um what all you saw was a whole bunch of memes about world war three and people basically panicking you know you got jakes out here talking about they're not gonna go to war, they're gonna find a way to get out. And you look at this generation now, they're not a fighting generation. You know, the generations are old, like you know, World War One and World War Two, or even a lot of Jakes that was uh that was in the Iraq war, including myself, which I didn't go for political reasons. You know, I end up just happened to go to the war. Man, I signed up to the to the military like a like a month before September 11th happened. You know, but you had a lot of people signing up to go to war during that time because they were thought it was a patriotic move and you might you might get that same sentiment when this war fully breaks out but a lot of but a lot of those people that go to this war a lot of those men that's going to die over there and women because you women getting drafted too are going to be uh, a lot of people that are drafted you know uh, you know basically they're going because they of fighting age and the draft age i think i picked it up let me see if i can find it because they had the draft the draft uh the draft age for uh america right now as it stands because they could also move it up but usually they want somebody in fighting shape and in a prime of their life so the draft age it says uh the selected service in 1948 enacted in, in june of that year created a new separate system the basis for the modern system all men 17 years and older had to register with the selective service. All men between the ages of 13 to 26 were eligible to be drafted for the service requirements. Okay. And that was in uh 1917. But um let me see. Let's see if that change. Uh, uh US draft limit, age limit. So now this says right here from 18 to 25 years old. What is the draft age? All men from 18 to 25 years of years old are required to register with the selected service system many young men check the box to register when getting a driver's license others sign up when applying for federal and student aid to attend college and you don't really know that you're doing that you just do it and but hey look that's the age man and that's the age for men and women because women are going to be drafted in this new war man this last third world war you got a lot of people making jokes you know and that, like again the reason why we did this or was this video was inspired is because you saw a lot of that. You saw a lot of people making jokes about, uh, you know, the third world war. I was showing a brother, a couple of videos that I had found on, uh, you know, people making jokes about the war like this, you know, me and the boys, when we don't know how to use our kill streak in world war three, you got, Hey, I ran, let's settle this old fashioned way. You got niggas dancing, man. Having a fucking dance off. He got. He says, "Army recruiter, what drugs have you done in the last year?" All of them. And he says, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, it, it is crazy because because this generation love to do drugs, man. That's another thing too. A lot of y'all are. You think that your drug use is going to prevent you from going to war? Listen, the standard is going to be so low for for draftees, man. They're going to take drug addicts, man. They're going to take drug addicts. They're going to take robbers, murderers, whatever they can take. 
because that's how many people are going to die in this third world war, man. And it's yeah. in the scriptures, man. You got it, brother. Con, because remember that uh, uh, California forest fire, they started using prisoners to battle the fire. So yeah. why not do the same for for uh, <laughs> for a war, man? Mm -hmm. It's all you, hey, you want to get out early or you want to, uh, you know, get some time knocked off, shaved off. They're going to have a whole prison unit, man. Units of prisoners, man. And they, they just going to mix them in. They don't care. That's what type of fight. That's what that's that's where the, the type of war is coming, man. You know, I'll keep playing this for a little, little bit more. Hold Says uh, his daughter in the building breaking down. Me, me parachuting off a plane into the enemy's turf during World War Three, which the enemy's turf is going to be all over because World War Three is not just going to affect these major countries like Iran, Israel, uh, uh, uh Russia. It's going to affect America too. So just because you ain't go to World War, just because you ain't go to theater in World War Three, don't mean you're not going to be involved in it, man. Because these Gurga troopers, they're coming over here. Can you find that scripture where it says they shall not be able to pay them off with gold or silver, something like that? You know, uh, the brothers said uh, Hosea four and six, Obadiah one and eighteen, Hosea four and six says, "My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge." Because thou has rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. That thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou has forgotten the law of thy power. Yeah, and I will forget thy children. And, and that's what happened, man. And and a lot of you, Jakes, you're going to die because you have lack of knowledge of Yahweh Shai. Had you, had you turned back to Yahweh Shai, repentant, fool, and sorrowful, Yahweh Shai would have had mercy on you, man. But a lot of you, Jakes, you want to do your own thing. You want to remain ignorant. Well, guess what? Hey, you niggas going to die, man. And a lot of you, you want this system. You want America to continue and to thrive. So there is going to be an operation. Get behind the darkies. And you, you jakes, man, you, 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 don't, you don't know that you're setting up, getting set up to ultimately be destroyed. Because when you go to this man's army, you're going to take the chip. But because you have a lack of knowledge of your how about Shima was shot, you're going to take that chip. You know? You're going to take it. And, yeah, and, and, yeah. and like the uh, apostles, you know, they push that uh, the chip is going to come before the uh, before World War Three anyways. Yeah. You know? And they show you on movies like uh, that one DC movie with Will Smith in it. The. Um, oh, yeah. What was it called? Uh, uh, Suicide Squad. Yeah, That's Suicide. what it was. <laughs> you know, they they basically made the bad guys, you know, slave through the RFID chip. And if they didn't fight, then they blew the shit up. Like the brother said, uh, in World War Two or in World War One, they had officers uh, kill soldiers that didn't fight. So you know, same thing, man. If you yeah. don't want to fight, you're going to be considered a domestic terrorist. And bam, right on the spot, blow the chip yeah. up. What they call it? Uh, they call it. Uh, they call it uh, something death. I forget what it's called. It's a. It begins with an M. The word begins with an M. But uh, basically, they're a summary death, man. Yeah, summary death. So it's Isaiah uh, 13 and 17. Behold, I will stir up the meads against them which shall not regard silver. And as for gold, they shall not delight in it. Right. And that's right because uh, uh, verse uh, 18 says, Their bows also shall dash the young men to pieces. They shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes shall not spare children. So a lot of you women that's going to get knocked up to stop yourselves from going to the army, <laughs> going to this military draft, being drafted into the Space Force, all that shit. Guess what? You're going to die anyway. Your kids are going to be destroyed anyway because it's not going to be an easy way for you to, to get out. You know, you can, you're going to get either way. You're going to lose, you know. And again, these these armies, they're not going to want silver or gold. They're just going to want they just going they won't want blood, man. So they're going to come to America, man, because traditionally these American wars are fought away from America. So your average everyday citizen, they don't really regard, you know, what's going on because it's not affecting them. You know, they might got an extra job or they might got some, you know, extra time on a on a or, you know, some overtime. But outside of that, you know, it don't really affect them. The Iraq war didn't affect them. World War One and World War Two, it really didn't affect America. America got into World War Two late. I don't even think they was in World War One. If they were, they, it was like a, 
it was it was a small role, man. It wasn't a big major role. Well, in World War Three, can you get uh Revelation chapter uh nine? I'm sorry, Revelation chapter eleven, verse fourteen, Baba Gesha. Oh, in World War World War Three, you know, uh it's gonna be fought here in America. You got it, brother. Uh, uh Revelation eleven and fourteen. It says the second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. Right. And you got it, brother. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of and of his Mashiach, and he shall reign forever and ever. God, yeah, and the, so the point was really in 14, is that the first woe is past, the second woe is past, and behold, the third woe coming quickly, man. And that's what's, that's what's, that's what's about to happen, you know? And again, this draft is coming back because the majority of the soldiers. But right now, the UK, uh, the America, they're they're really suffering from a lack of troops, man. Because nobody wants to join the military. And on top of that, not only do they not want to join the military, a lot of these people, they're um, a lot of these people, they're um, uh, um, they're not fit for military service, man. You know, especially this young generation. Again, a lot of these youngsters, they got like felonies like crazy violent felonies a lot of these youngsters they're on drugs they're addicted to drugs you know they're they're, they're uh, a lot of them are simple minded you know they they're not they're not in fighting shape that's another reason why you're going to lose this battle man beyond the fact that Yahweh Shai is coming back himself to 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 destroy all these armies man you know you got something brother uh yeah i kind of wanted to start up a bit in uh Isaiah the 13th chapter Go ahead. Uh, you want me to? Uh, I'll open it up right here. So lock you. Yeah. yeah. Uh. All right, brother. Go ahead. Uh, thirteen and. Um. And about, yeah. uh, I mean, you can really start from the start from the top. Yeah, God, God, this is Amos three and one. The burden of Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amos did see, lift up a lift up a banner upon a high mountain, exalt the voice unto them, shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. Okay, uh, I have commanded my sanctified ones. I have also, I have also called my mighty ones for my anger, even them that rejoice in my highness. Yeah, because you know, all all these like you know, all these heathens are the the most highest tools for his weapons too, man. He's stirring up controversy. You know, he's stirring up all these heathens against each other for war, man. That's right. The noise of a multitude in the mountains. Like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of the nations gathered together. The Lord of hosts has mustered the host to the battle. They come from a far country in the end of heaven, even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. <laughs> God. Which yeah, is that? I'm sorry, you got it. I was just going to say that's, that's pretty much self-explanatory, uh, man. God. And for your for y'all that don't understand it or that's new, the that the, those weapons of its indignation are those nuclear missiles, man. And the whole land that is coming to destroy is America. Cause see, this third world war, like we were showing, I was showing a brother in a video. You got people talking about what they're gonna tell their kids, you know, what they're gonna tell their kids uh, uh after after the third world war, like it's like it's gonna be like 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 the first world war and the second world war was and these other conflicts where you basically fought and you came back from those uh from those uh conflicts man you said telling my grandkids what i did in and world war three i hopped out i started shooting bow, 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 bow. yeah you know like that's not gonna happen man because the whole land of america is gonna be destroyed man okay so you gonna die either way if you're on american soil if you're not part of the elect you're gonna die. You're gonna 
Most High is going to destroy you with the with the weapons of his indignation, those nuclear missiles. And if you're in, if you're in the Middle East fighting, guess what? You're going to die too. And the Lord is going to destroy all these armies, man. All all the armies of the world are going to be destroyed when Yahweh Shai comes, man. Uh, you keep reading, brother. Okay, uh, Isaiah thirteen and uh, six. Okay, I'll keep reading. Um, uh, yeah. It says, "How ye for the day of the Lord is at hand; it shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Therefore, shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt." Kind like uh, the scriptures say, uh, how. Uh, the deliverance from the north country is going to be greater than uh, the deliverance from Egypt. And, you know, you had during the plague of darkness, you just had people dropping because they're so scared. Same thing when it comes to, uh, you know, the uh, Jacob's trouble and, you know, the uh, <clears throat> the third world woe, you know, World War Three. All right. The uh, the battle of uh, uh of Jehoshaphat, which means a, a valley of judgment. All right. You know, you're going to have people just so scared, you know, they're going to be dropping. That's right. That's right, man. And in a lot of them, like we were saying earlier, you know, even with this third world war, <laughs> Jake is scared, man. You think it's a kill each other, man. But when you see some wild nation running towards you or from a distance popping you or people sitting next to you getting their head blown off, Hey, it's gonna be way different than than being in the ghetto and you just ride in the car doing a drive by, man. This is gonna be up close and personal, man. You know, and like the brother said, on top of the fact that Howard Shy is coming back, on top of the fact those missiles are going off, man. You know, it says men men's hearts shall melt, man. You know, and it, and they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travelleth. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. Yeah, Karen, <laughs> this is one of my favorite ones where it says they shall be in pain uh, as a woman that travaileth, man. Because, you know, they, you know, you, the, the, when women are pregnant and they go into labor, you know, they'll give them those uh, uh, pain killer shots or nerve blockers and they still feel it, man. You know, and they're crying, and, you know, for hours, man. And, and and you know holding on to their stomachs man same thing these men are going to be you know the <laughs> same ones making all these memes talking about this is what i'm going to tell my kids when when after world war three is over you know or making jokes about how you know they're good at call of duty so they're going to be good at you know killing people uh uh in the <laughs> when they get drafted man For real? they're, they're going to be you know scared shitless man and be yeah, crying that's like little girls that's why the scripture says folly is set in great dignity, man. Mm -hmm. And the rich in low place, man, because right now this folly is being is being uh is being set in high dignity. Yeah, like we'll laugh at it, but really it's not funny. You got King distracting the Iranian soldiers as we sneak. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, King distracting the Iranian soldiers as we sneak into that base. You see? So even your military, and she's in the military, bro. Yeah, this, this is before the draft, man. Yeah, this is before the draft. You know what I'm saying? So how much more? You women going, man, you through, man. All that, all that women are strong as men, stronger. Women are, the, the black woman is God and, and all this other shit, you know? Guess what? That shit's going to go out the window when you get drafted, man. It's going to go out the window when all hell breaks loose. It's going to go out the window when you got to go down there and fight, man. You ain't going to be shaking and twerking, man. You know what I'm saying? These hoes going to be getting raped. How mm -hmm. about that? You bitches going to be getting kidnapped, and it ain't going to be like Jessica Lynch where they send in special forces to come get you. Nah, they just going to be on you. They, they, you're, going, you're just going to be out there. And, yeah, she got kidnapped. That's it. They're not going to They're not gonna set up no spare no troops to go get you, man. And then you ain't even got to worry about just – foreign troops man you gonna have to worry about the regular troops man those guys man and one thing i know about war and how it it affects women you know and this was on a personal level because it's i uh witnessed it firsthand so like hold on brother hold on i witnessed it firsthand bro is that war makes 
women scared and horny for real bro for real when a bitch think that she about to die you know, a lot of times the only thing she can think about is getting popped man you know so that's gonna happen man you know you you're gonna have that you're gonna have that going on man because a lot of you women because they don't allow the women they don't allow the men to go on the economy and deal with the women of the other nations so who do you think them dudes gonna be dealing with they, they're just gonna be dealing with themselves Nah, they're gonna be trying to deal with them soldiers and that same chick Kima who was shaking her ass or came whatever her name is trying to try to uh <laughs> what is it said uh to uh to distract the Iranian army and they're not gonna be distracted by that. That bitch gonna get shot down, man. She's gonna get trampled like the mire in the street, man. Hmm. You know, she gonna get trampled like the mire in the street. But let me go back. Let me go back to that. You know. He said, "Me, me. When a person I'm standing beside is blown away in World War Three." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like day for real. It's gonna be like that. It's gonna be like that for real, man. You know. Oh, uh, you want me to keep reading Isaiah, bro? Um. Oh, I had a uh, real quick. I had a precept in J Jeremiah thirty and six. Ask ye now and see whether a man doth travail with a child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness. <laughs> Yeah, and that paleness isn't talking about, you know, your shade, man. You know, if you say someone looks pale, that means like, you know, they like if uh, uh, like today's terminology, they'll, be, they'll say, you know, you look pale like you just seen a ghost or something. You know, they got that shook look on their face, man. That's what it means to look pale. God, it says lividness, lividness, mildew, whether a person from fright right here. It says paleness, whether of a person from fright, you know. So niggas gonna be so scared, and that's and that's also going into Jacob's trouble too, because it says a last for that day is great, so that none is like it. Is it even the time of Jacob's trouble? But he shall be saved out of it. So even during the time of Jacob's trouble, this kind of action is gonna be happening, especially during war. You seen that little dude? He said, uh, they said, uh, me watching somebody get their head blown off standing next to me, and the little nigga was like, dang, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? Like. That's all it is. And I wanted to bring this word out because it's what Apostle Hart said, but it, it it hit it hit on point because you know how Jake get, they want to wait to the last minute to, to worship the Lord or when all hell breaks loose and they, they catching hell, then they want to worship the Lord, man. Go ahead, uh, Proverbs 4. See, niggas think everything's a joke until shit gets real, man. Yeah. Uh, when shit gets real, you cannot So lock it, Jake. I mean Esau fucking with the stream. So lock it. The hell is going on? Esau's cut. <laughs> yeah. Uh, problems for See, niggas. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. This all of a sudden now it ain't working. Nothing ain't working. So lock your brother, just bear with me, man. Go ahead, I. Uh, Proverbs 4. See, niggas think everything's a joke until shit gets real, man. Yeah. And when shit gets real, you cannot turn around and say, now you want to be an Israelite and you want and you want to you want to cram and all that. Yeah. And that's right, man. Because niggas think everything's funny. Go ahead, I. Uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on with the stream internet. All of a sudden, it ain't working right. But anyway, you get the point, man. You get the message, man. Is that niggas think everything is a joke until it ain't funny no more, man. And even being an Israelite, Jake won't get down, want to get right when all hell breaks loose. Now I want, I want to be an Israelite. Them teach me everything I need to know about being an Israelite. I got all the time now. Nah, man, it's too late, man. You got to go go to them that sell, man. 
You're not going to get none of our oil, man. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not going to get none of our oil because, see, had you been dealing, had you been a part of the truth, had had you been worshiping your house by Shmi, I was shy, this third world war, it wouldn't get you scared. So, like, me and the brothers, we're not scared, man. We understand, one, that it's going to happen. We understand right now this is not World War Three. World War Three has not started yet officially. You know what I mean? Even with all this drama with Iran and America. But you wouldn't know that if you 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 would know that if you were a part of the truth, man. You would know that if you was calling on Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, because the Lord said in Isaiah 30, so like yeah, Isaiah uh what is it 33 and 6, it says, And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time, and the strength and strength of salvation, the fear of the Lord is his treasure. Had you known to fear the Lord, you know, um, you you know that one, this is not a joking matter, it's not a laughing matter. And that's the problem with this generation, man. Niggas is just, you know, everything's a game. Everything's funny. Everything's a joke. You know, there's a saying, everything's funny till it ain't funny no more, man. Mm -hmm. Kind of the brother, uh, Tezakia Yahweh, he's posting the uh, scriptures from Proverbs 1. Kind of. That's the spirit because I just had that pulled up too. But uh, Proverbs 1 and 23, it says, Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. And he's been doing this, you know, through the the uh, uh, through the apostles down onto the least brothers of Great Millstone, and even to these uh, um, other camps, you know, that that are still preaching in the name of Yahweh Shem Shai, and according to the correct doctrine for years now. Uh, verse twenty four, because I have called. And ye refused, I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded. And that's what you see now, man. Just Jake, you know, not wanting to <laughs> listen. Uh, verse 25, but ye have set at not all my counsel, and would none of my reproof. God. Now it is high time to awake out of sleep. Or sorry, uh, verse 26, it says, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh, you know, because you, you're going to you're making uh, light of the situation now, you know, making jokes about it now. But the most high says, I'm going to laugh at you when this day comes. That's you know, right. you don't want to take me seriously, you know, but once it hits on your head, man, you ain't going to be laughing so hard. You know, right. like it's, you know, there's a bunch of scriptures on, on, you know, crying now and laughing later. Yeah. Um, it says, when your fear cometh as as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, <laughs> it says, then shall they call upon me, but I will not hear or I will not answer. They shall seek me early. but They shall not find me, man. That's cold, bro. Because, uh, 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 yeah, that's it. Judges 10 and 14. <laughs> that's the spirit. Uh, it says, go and cry unto the gods which ye have chosen. Let them deliver you in, in the time of your tribulation. Because the Most High has done this before. You know, he, you know, it's all throughout the scriptures over and over again. He'll send his prophets, try to warn them. And then, you know, they take uh, advantage of this time of mercy. And then he's like, all right, F it. You know, I'm going to let the en enemy just F y'all up, man. He says, go and cry unto the gods and idols that you've chosen, man. Because you wanted to take my word for for a joke, it's deadly serious, man. That's right. What's this? Yeah. Proverbs. Uh, oh, did you want to say something? Oh, you got it, brother. You got it. I was just gonna read the scriptures that you. Yeah, clicking. go ahead and read it. Uh, you want me to start at twenty nine? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Proverbs one and twenty nine for that he for. So like it for they, that they hated uh, knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Yeah, and that's what that's exactly what it is, man. Because the only thing that's going to keep you safe and st stable in these times, man, that are coming is Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, His Word, man. The knowledge and wisdom and understanding, you know. And you, Jake, you hate knowledge, man. You know, you love wickedness, but you hate the knowledge of righteousness, man. And you didn't choose to fear the Lord because the scripture says the fear of the Lord is the be the beginning of knowledge, man. It's the beginning of wisdom. 
the fear of the Lord is the beginning of, of, of the knowledge of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. You know, and if you fear the Lord, you're gonna do what's commanded of you to do. You know, if you don't fear him, you're gonna do everything that he is against, man. And right now you see a lot of you Jakes, you consume with folly and bullshit and wickedness, man. You know, and nobody's gonna feel sad for you when you get drafted. Nobody's gonna feel bad for you. Not at least not the men of the Lord. We're not gonna feel that way because we told you so, man. The biggest I told you show was coming to you live and direct, man. You know, and because you didn't choose to fear the Lord, he's gonna laugh at your calamity. He's gonna laugh when your desolation comes as a destruction, you know, as a whirlwind, because it's gonna come out of nowhere for Jake. Oh man, we were just chilling, and what the hell happened? Hey, look, a couple days ago, you niggas was you, you niggas was just partying and bullshitting, popping bottles, screaming happy new years, and then not on not not 48 hours later, man, Trump's Trump going to you know beefing with Iran, man, and getting you Jake's all excited. Social media, Twitter is going into black Twitter went into an uprage today because they talking about uh, getting uh getting drafted, you know. But like Apostle Tahar said, like Apostle Tahar said. Problems, See, niggas think everything's a joke until shit gets real, man. Yeah, and when man. shit gets real, you cannot turn around and say, "Now you want to be an Israelite and you want and you want to you want to cram and all that, man." And that's right, man. You <laughs> Boy, you, you had an opportunity, and and you squandered it, man. Really, the Lord allowed you to squander it, man, because you didn't want to accept the truth while you had an opportunity. You didn't want to accept. Uh, uh, you uh, didn't want to be a part of this thing, you know. You started seeing persecution come. You was like, "Oh man, hell with that." Well, then now, now you out there, man. You know. You got anything else, brother? Um. Yeah, con. Um. I was gonna get Joel the third chapter. Yeah, I think I. Uh, Hold on, brother. Um, go ahead and get it, brother. Kind uh, Joel three and nine. It says, "Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles: Prepare war, wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords, and your pruning hooks into spears." Yeah, let you hear? I'm sorry. You it says, it. "Let the weak say, I am strong." And that's what these nations are saying. These 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 weaker nations that were so called weak economically and militarily, now they took all their their uh, money that they would use for their infrastructure, agriculture to help their people. They taking it to to arm up, man. North Korea, they say they, this guy Kim Jong Un, he's starving his people to get weapons, man. Why? And they're looking at America like, look, I'm strong. We got nuclear miss missiles too. They buying nuclear missiles and technology from Russia, so hey, they're ready to go, man. Pakistan, India, Iran, you know, uh, China. You know, a lot of these countries just a couple of decades ago were nothing. Now look at them. Go ahead. It says, assemble yourselves and come, all the all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Yep. Let the heathen be weakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. Yeah, which is in a, in a Hebrew, that's Yahweh Shapat. It's just the judgment. It's Yahweh's judgment, man, or the judgment of Yahweh. And that's what he's going to do with all these armies in the Middle East. He's going to judge you. Read uh, verse 3, Baba Gashan. Verse 3. Come. Joel 3 and 3 says, And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for an harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. Uh, verse 2, Baba Gashan, Salaki. Come. Uh, verse 2, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and, yeah. will, and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom that's they right. have scattered among the nations and parted my land. And that's the reason, that's a major reason why all you nations are going to get judged, man. It's not going to be one nation on this earth that's not going to be touched by this World War Three, it's not going to be one nation that's not going to be touched by the judgment that's not going to be touched by the judgment of Yahweh Bashim was shot. The only one that's going to get that pardon is the elect of Israel. That's it. Everybody else is judgment season, man, especially for you nations. 
And he gave a few reasons why. One, because you scattered his people across the four corners of the earth. And two, you parted his land, man. When you go to Israel, what's, what's going on? You got that, that male and female army there. And, and then that's a conscript army. Well, guess what? Like, y'all not the Lord's people because the Lord's people wouldn't be doing nothing like that. Y'all living in that land. Y'all split it with them Arabs. Y'all fighting tooth and nail to, 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 to expand settlements. All kinds of stuff, man. You parted that land. And you eat them as you took the choices of that land, and and then you gave the 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 the, the bad part of the land to them Arabs, man. So the Lord's gonna he gonna he's gonna judge all you nations, man. Round about. I wanted to get into this uh, article real quick. I had a couple of articles. Uh, you done with that, brother? Uh -huh. Con. This is from Time uh, dot com, and this is uh posted uh. October 10th, 2019. It says, why bringing back the draft could stop America's wars forever. I'm, I'm sorry, could stop America's forever wars. It says, around Memorial Day each year, I take my children to Arlington National Cemetery. I've got friends buried there, and I think the best way to tend to their memory is to tell my kids the stories about them. Who knows? Maybe when my kids are grown up, they'll pass some of those stories down to their own kids. I try not to take them to the Memorial Day itself as it is packed. So usually we wind up there at the school uh, the week before. Two years ago on our visit, a detachment from the old guard, the ceremonial troops who worked at the Arlington was lined up in formation behind riderless horses and, and Cassians. My, my kids asked me what was going on, and I explained that the soldiers were being prepared for a funeral. As I told this to my daughter, I caught myself staring across the Potomac toward downtown Washington, observing the, the indifferent afternoon hustle. A sadness came over me, but I was with my kids, so I shook it off. We visited a few more graves, and I told them a few more stories. Then we left. On the drive home, my daughter asked me if somebody she would have to, if someday, if someday she would have to fight in a war. Only if you want to, kiddo. I answered, but it, I, but I, but could but could feel my response stick in my throat. I then glanced at the rear view mirror and a little silver of her face, sliver of her face that was just her eyes. And I watched as she tried to understand the difference. In 2019 marks the first year someone born after 9-11 will be eligible to enlist in the armed forces to potentially serve in Afghanistan or another theater. In a global war on terror, never before in our history, has any American been able to fight in a war that is older than they are? Currently, our, currently our civil military divided is arguably as wide as has, it has ever been. The burden of nearly two decades of war, nearly 7,000 dead and more than 50,000 wounded, has been largely sustained by 1% of our population. From the Somalia to Syria, American forces are engaged in combat. With recent military posturing against I Iran, against North Korea, it is also easily to imagine a country sleepwalking into another major theater of war, which we were just we were talking about, the Third World War. To avoid those outcomes of a major theater war, the count the continuance of our terror wars, the attendance loss of life, we must move the issue of war and peace from the periphery of our national discourse into the center. And the only way to do that is increasingly believed to re is to reconsider the draft. Congress also has taken a renewed interest in the draft, having created in 2016 a bipartisan national commission, a military, national, and public services charge with two missions. The first is to determine whether the selective service registration requirement should be extended to include women. This in the light of the 2015 reforms that allow women unrestricted military service the second is which which unrestricted military service mean that women can fight on the front lines, man. You can fight in combat units, man, or you can you can join combat units and have to fight in them shits too. And I was in the army. Them combat units are nasty, man. Them Edomites that be sitting in them tanks, man. You talking about having a woman in a tank and they're gonna destroy her, man. You know what I'm saying? She gotta be dirty. You gonna be filthy. Oh, it's bad, man. It's, you know she gets on a rag. It's going to be terrible, man. This is the second is to explore whether the government should require all Americans to serve in some capacity 
as part of their civic duty and duration of that service. The commission is slated to submit these recommendations to Congress and the president in March and the president in March 2020, which is what another two months from now. This past January, while it continues to hold hearings in community communities across the country, it released the first interim report. The report found that the selective service is a mystery to most Americans who were not aware that all men ages 18 to 25 have a legal obligation to register case of a draft. Although the draft was abolished in 1973, the selective service re registration requirement was resumed in 1980 when after the Soviet Union invaded the Afghanistan and capability to cons conscript was again deemed critical to the national defense, the system was registering for selective service is passive. It occurs when you apply for your driver's license, federal student aid, most American males aren't even aware that they register for the draft. You mm. see? And you see how Esau, he slid it in. He slid it into his uh, legislations, man. How many of you don't went to college graduated or not uh uh applied for federal student aid the majority of them, the uh fast from signees are jakes man mm -hmm. how many of you jake how many of you got driver's license man a lot of jakes a lot of edomites and other nations here they got what they got them driver's license you signed up for the draft man so a lot of you say well i ain't signed up for the draft or oh, i'm retarded i can't fight in the draft well that's gonna be left left up for them man Cause you already signed up for it and didn't even know you did it. Furthermore, yeah. the commission. Oh, you got it, brother. Kind of like uh, you can't even, you can't vote without signing up for the selected services. Uh, even to just applying for colleges, they, uh, it's mandatory to sign up for the selective services. Like you don't even have to be accepted in, but just to you know apply, you know. Right. And like you said, driver's license. You know, probably. I think I remember. Um, when I was getting a job, uh, I had to sign up for the selective services. So, I mean, you know, there's no way around it, man. You know, the, the most high is setting this up for, for you know, <laughs> if you're uh, one of the two thirds or you see the nations, man, you're going to be called to the Valley of Jehoshaphat, man. Point That's blank, period. That's right. Furthermore, the commission intern report de 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 deals explicitly with the numbers we'd be talking about. If a draft ever occurred, ever again occurred under the military's current standards, 71% of Americans ages 17 to 24 do not meet the physical or mental qualifications for military service. 70, 71%. That's a lot. That's almost, that's almost damn near three quarters, man, of America. It says, <laughs> people often assume the draft was compulsory for the entire generation, but this was never the case of those killed in Vietnam, the war mostly inexistibly linked to the draft. 69.3% were volunteers. To wage war, America has always had to create a social construct to sustain it, from the colonial militias to the French aid and revolution, to the introduction of the draft, the first ever income tax fund, the Civil War, to, to the war bonds and industrial mobilization of World War II. In the past, a blend of taxation and conscription meant it was difficult for us to sustain a war beyond several years. Neither citizens nor citizen soldiers had much patience for commanders or commanders in chief who muddled along. Take, for example, Washington reading Thomas Paine's The American Crisis. I'm not going to read all of that. So it says today, the way we wage war is uh, astro. Uh, a, a historical. Water, a historical and seemingly without end. Never before has America engaged in a pro, uh, protracted conflict with all volunteer military that was funded primarily through deficit spending. Of course, current 22 trillion national debt, which that's 23 trillion now, approximately 6 trillion is a bill for the post 9 11 wars. It says they have become America's longest surpassing vietnam 12 years it's been by design in the aftermath of 9 11 there was virtually no serious public debate about war tax or a draft you know and then there's another article after a court ruling 
here's what's next for women in the draft. The federal decision Friday, this is uh, February 2019, says that a law requiring men but not women to register for the U.S. military draft is unconstitutional, has no immediate impact on women or the U.S. selective service system, but it does revive debate about whether the country needs military draft system and, and if so, whether all 18-year-olds, regardless of gender, should be required to register. Judge Gary Miller of the U.S. Southern District of Texas ruled Friday that the Military Selective Service Act discriminated on the basis of gender. And you got all these women talking about some, oh, we're equal, no gender rights for everybody. Well, guess what? You, Your ass is going to fight. You're going to fight that war for Uncle Sam, man. He said the U.S. Selective Service System argument in defense smacked of an archaic and overboard generalization about women's preference. The argument, as interpreted by Miller, included concerns that a draft for both genders would have a negative impact on military recruitment because women might believe they will be forced to force into combat positions if they, if they enlist, which they will be. You will be. What you think you're just gonna sit back in a on a in the back of the line looking pretty? No, nah, you're gonna fight. You're gonna fucking fight, man. Hey, you know Karen, what the the brother uh GMS Watchman of Yahweh he said uh I was in basic with some window looking ease, <laughs> like Esau's Edomites. As long huh. as you can walk and breathe, they got a spot for you. So yeah, right. man. Like you you try to play that role of oh, I'm too, you know, I'm not physically able. Man, they'll put you uh on our artillery, man. Drive drive a Humvee. You got yep. a driver's license, you're qualified. Get in there, man. <laughs> <laughs> get in there, get in there. That's right, man. That's right. It says uh at its core, the, the defendant argument rests. On the assumption that women are significantly more combat adverse than Miller than uh, than men, Miller wrote, the ruling does not order the federal government to change its policy on who must register, nor does it make any recommendations to the Congress, which would have to change the laws governing selective service systems to require women to sign up. You know, and then it says right here, women may soon. Uh, this is a uh, published of March 4th, 2019. Women may soon have to register for the draft. It's long overdue because you already got women in service anyway. A federal judge ruling last month that the exclusion of women from selective service registration is unconstitutional has returned an age old debate to the forefront. Does making a military more inclusive threaten military preparedness? Critics have long and I'm not going to read this too much, but critics have long alleged that integrating formerly excluded groups into the military advanced social equality at the expense of military efficiency the basic claim has been used repeatedly throughout the u.s history to oppose women as well as african-american which they, they 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 let niggas sign up to the military now and women but african-americans and lgbtq americans serving in the military never mind compulsory service but each of these cases the fundamental premise behind the cha charge has been 100 percent false Drafting women cannot turn the military into a social experiment because the military has always been a social experiment. The inseparable nature between national defense and domestic social concerns ensure that who serves will always reflect social judgment and values that go far beyond the military uh, and necessity. So, yeah. So, hey, man, just get it ready, man. And you got another one. A judge has ruled male only military draft unconstitutional. What happens now? What happens now is you women going to war. You got something, brother? No. no. I got a precept. This is um, this is Ezekiel uh, 39 and 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will give unto God a place there of graves in Israel in a valley of passengers on the east of the sea. It shall be, it shall stop the noses of the passengers and there shall they bury Gog and all his multitudes, and they shall call it the Valley of Hamingog, right? Because when this third war, after that third world war happens, the first job for you, you, you super elite, is going to have to bury all these, all these Russian, all these Russian troops over there in the Middle East, man. Which is going to be called the Battle of Hamingog, and not only they're they're going to be over there, but other soldiers too, American troops, 
All of them. It's all going to be there. You got something, brother? Uh, that word, I was just going to add that that word, ham and gog, means multitude of gog. Yeah, multitude know? of gog. Because, you know, it's going to be known, like, oh, this is where these <laughs> people of God got effed up, man, and numerous multitude, man. Yeah. And seven months shall the house of Israel be burying of them that they may cleanse the land. And we're not going to bury shit. You heathens going to do it. Ye all, yeah, all the people of the land shall bury them. It shall be to them a renown that day that I shall be glorified, saith the Lord power. Yahweh by Shemiah was shy, and they shall sever out men continuing employment passing through the land to bury with the passengers those that remain upon the face of the earth to cleanse it. And after the end of seven months, shall they search? And the uh, yeah. yeah, you got it. And that, that proves that you know, these other heathen, you know, there's going to be some of them left uh, alive after you know, World War Three or in Jacob's trouble, but then guess what? They're going right into uh servitude man we're gonna say hey man get on get, get to digging man dig these bodies it was right man and it says uh and and the passengers that pass through the land when any see if a man's bones then shall he set up a sign by it till the burials have buried it in the valley of him and god mm -hmm. and, yeah and that, that whose job is that gonna be you super elite man you rothschild you rockefellers you're going to be getting hot, man. You're going to be getting hot, hot, hot. I got another scripture, brother. Isaiah 3 and 25. It says, uh, I'll start at, uh, yeah, Isaiah 25. It says, thy men shall fall by the sword and thy mighty in the war. Which war is that? World War III. So the, and, and her gates shall lament and mourn, and she being desolate shall sit upon the ground. You know, so you women. You're gonna the women that's left here in America because there's still gonna be women here in America. Not everybody's going to war, but a lot of your men they're gonna die in the war, man. And and you're gonna sit on the ground and you're gonna lament because nobody's gonna be there to defend you, man. And then that's another way, that's another reason why the next scripture, Isaiah 4 and 1. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name. To take away our our reproach, man, and that 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 one man is going to be a man of the Lord, man. A lot of you women, you're going to be ready. To, you're going to be on the market, man, and it ain't going to be like no goddamn tender slide. We're gonna we gotta we gonna take you out to eat, and we're gonna, you know we're gonna seek your approval, bitch. You're gonna be seeking our approval, man. You know, because we're gonna be the picker of the litter, man. You know, the Lord said He's gonna make a man more precious than fine gold, man. One, it ain't gonna be no competition for us, and two, it ain't gonna be no competition because we're gonna be spiritually endowed. Three, you know what I'm saying? You women gonna see that the most high is with us and protecting us, and you're gonna try to latch on, man. God, and like I was telling the brother before, that's another way to dodge the draft if you're a woman, is if you're pregnant, you know. Yeah. So I mean, you're gonna have midges be looking to get pregnant when that yeah. draft comes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or if they do get drafted, they're gonna be like, "Man, I gotta get pregnant." <laughs> Y'all gotta get knocked up before uh -huh. that. Man. So you're gonna try to you're gonna try to escape the draft through pregnancy, man. Let me see if they got anything on on the line about that. Escape draft. Uh. Cause that's the first thing they're gonna go to, man. They're trying to get pregnant. Yeah, here you go, right here. Questions for the Pentagon about drafting. Uh, uh, about drafting women, man. Uh, this is from 2016. It says, "Will pregnancy and or motherhood be a disqualifying condition that enables women to avoid registration for the draft? If so, and given the refusing that refusing to register for a draft." Is a is a federal felony with a fine up to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars and a five year prison term. So you seen that? You seen that? You seen that? I don't know if you saw it on a, uh, that video about how niggas talking about how they gonna be walking into the prison, right here. Niggas talking about how they gonna be walking into the prison uh, if they gotta get drafted. But yeah, you niggas ain't gonna want to do no fucking five years, no no fucking federal penitentiary, man. 
You niggas talk that shit. Yeah, me and my homies meeting up in prison after we all refuse to be drafted in the service. <laughs> this is not gonna happen. This is not gonna happen. You see? Yeah, you, know what I'm saying? you see how niggas you acting and shit? Yeah, me and my homies meeting up in prison after we refuse a draft. You niggas don't got no integrity like that to refuse no draft. It's five years, that's a long time to get booked, man. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And you still gonna die because you're gonna have to chip in and America's gonna be destroyed anyway. You niggas gonna be like, I'll take my chance with the gun. You know what I'm saying? It says, it says, what will the penalty be for a woman who intentionally get pregnant to avoid registration for the draft? And how will military authorities know when a woman did so? Similarly, once a woman is drafted and inducted. And knowing the military occupation specialties might not be voluntary, how will military authorities stop her from getting pregnant to avoid combat or any other hazardous duty? Because these bitches are lazy. You don't want to do shit. I was in the army. You hoes are lazy, bro. You bitches are lazy. A lot of you hoes got promoted. A lot of you bitches are E6s and E7s and E9s and whatnot because you you had somebody pop you, man. Not because of your hard work, man. He says, mm-hmm. will, she, will she be sterilized or forced to consume birth control pills or accept implants? And what will be the penalty if the military can prove a woman draftee did indeed get pregnant to avoid the duty? And then he got, will Christian women who believe in God did not equip women to, it says, will Christian women who believe that God did not equip women for combat or even less hazardous military duties and that women can, uh, combatants so these are just questions man yeah because they they say like uh i think another way you can get around it is like say it's against your moral or religious beliefs to like kill someone so you don't have to get drafted and you know you know people just lie and be like oh yeah i'm i I believe that i can't kill anybody or some shit so it's like how, how do you know if you know they're just saying that so they don't you know get the death sentence to go overseas yeah, and which they which they really they they taking away that right uh that right for exemption by religious purposes, man. That's being taken away anyway. So you're not going to be able to say that. They don't care, you know. Hey, that might be another reason why a hey, some of us may have to get thrown in prison, man. Because we're gonna refuse to go to the fucking. We're gonna refuse that. We ain't drafted up. Fuck that. We we'll wait on the Lord. We we'll wait on your house by some young shine. You know what I'm saying? A lot of brothers might have to go through that situation. I never thought about it until now. The spirit just had me think about it. Like, yo, like, you know, when that draft come, you know, brothers ain't going to the motherfucking uh, 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 draft, man. So brothers are either going to be on a run or, or moving around or some of them might get booked. But, hey, the Lord said, hold fast that what you learn. You know, uh, matter of fact, I'll get it. I don't know. Paraphrase. Uh, Revelation 2 and 9, man. Just you know, just in case, you know. Revelation two and nine. Brother said they got me signed up for selective service. Yep. Yeah, it's all good. Hey, I'm signed up too, man. Like it, you know. But I trust in the Lord that He's gonna deliver me out of that. That's right. You know, that's that's, right. that's, that's all there is to it, man. That's uh, right. Revelation two and nine. I know that works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. Oh, I'm sorry, two and ten. Two and ten, con. Uh, verse ten. Suck it. Revelation two and ten. It says, "Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer, including the draft. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. That's what's going to happen if you avoid the draft, that ye may be tried. That's all it is—a trial, just to see if you're going to, you know, say, hey, nah, I'm not doing that." You know, I've got certain beliefs. I believe that's well, like that's the Valley of Jehoshaphat. You know, I I believe that. You know, I got to wait on the Lord to straighten things out, and you shall have tribulation ten days. That's just a certain amount of time. Uh, it could be ten, or, or it could be you know more. It could be some months. It says, "Be thou faithful unto death." So no matter what comes, man, if you're still alive, you still got to hold your faith. It says, and I will give thee a crown of life. That's the reward, you know, you're going to receive if you just, you know, stick to Yahweh Shai. No matter what, what 
what is thrown at man a draft if you see a nuclear missile uh threat on on the way on the news hey like this brother did man you know when this brother that that's on the live stream right now he could tell you about it you know he got an alert on his phone saying that uh icbms were coming to hawaii and what he do he remained faithful man you know, that's the spirit that you got to be in if, you know, Esau says you get drafted, if you get thrown in prison, if you're getting painted like a domestic terrorist. So what, man? You, if you're doing the right thing, man, and you're, you know, remain spiritual, hey, the, the most high, you know, isn't blinded to that fact, all right? The most high isn't uh, uh, convinced by, you know, whatever fake news that Esau puts up, man. If you work things out with your Alba Shemar Shai, you're, you're you're going to receive that crown, baby. That's right. That's right, man. And that's the thing, man. You know, with the draft coming back, hey, we ain't got to worry about these things, man, because we got Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, which is our sure thing, man. It's our sure power, our sure mercy, sure mercies, you know, and the most high is going to be with us, man. You know, because we got a lot of brothers that are that are uh, war age, you know, that's war age, you know, that's between 18 and 25, man. But hey, the Lord's gonna be with us, man. You know that 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 valley of decision that's for two thirds, man. That that valley of that that valley of uh, decision is for for the nations, man. Not for the men of the Lord, man. So, uh, you got anything else, brother? That's it. Uh, yeah, I want to read this real quick. This is uh, Isaiah sixty-five and thirteen. It says, "Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh Shemuel Shai, Behold, my servant shall eat, but ye shall be hungry." And that ye is talking about the faithless man. It says, Behold, my servant shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my my servant shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. All right. So, you know, the, the most high servants, man, they're they're gonna be rejoicing during these times. All right. You know, but but the ones that are caught up in it, you know, they're gonna be ashamed. It says, Behold, my servant shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart. And shall howl for vexation of spirit, right? Because we know this, this, the draft, man, World War Three. that's one of the last prophecies. So yeah. we're going to be seeing, we're going to be like, dude, the kingdom's right around the corner, bro. But yeah. they're going to be like, oh, shit, nah, I got drafted. Fuck that, man. We're going to be like, yeah. man, Gucci. Like, all right, put yeah. me in prison, man. This yeah, shit bro. ain't got much longer. You ain't going to do no five years, bro. You can forget that. You already know. <laughs> you ain't going to do no five years, bro. Easy, man. That's nothing. Yo, they say you got to go to the bank. All right, whatever. You know what I said? I ain't doing no fuck here. Yeah, how about you know shy? He's right here. He's coming. You know what I'm saying? So so at that point, you know, like the brother said, World War Three come. Hey, Yahweh Shai is going to be there. He's going to be fighting. He's gonna be, they're going to be trying to fight him. And he's going he gonna, he gonna to be there with the angels, man, protecting us and, and destroying this place, man, and the, destroying these armies, man. So, yeah, like the brother said, you ain't got to worry about no five years, man. You ain't got to worry about no 250000 because the money system is going to be destroyed too, man, right along with this place, man. So, you know, if that's the case, man, we go in there with our head up high, man, and 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 and, and our spirit humble to you. How about you? How shy, man? You got it. Yeah. Uh, Revelation 3 and 10, and a brother posted it. I forgot which brother. Um, They're posting a lot of scripture. Oh, Ty, uh, brother Tazakia, Yahweh, all right. Uh, yeah, kind. It says, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. So, you know, the ones that have kept his word, you know, practice his law, statutes and commandments, you know, prophesying, you know, pre pushing this word in all truth and sincerity in whatever way possible. You know, the Most High is going to keep us during that temptation, you know. So I mean that that's all there is to it, man. It's not it's not like a a, a mystery, <laughs> you know. Matter of fact, it's gonna say uh, uh, the scriptures talk about um, um, they're gonna know who his servants are, you know, through the salvation, man. You know, like I've read in Isaiah, like the servants are gonna be eating, they're gonna be drinking, they're gonna be rejoicing, man. You know, Isaiah four and one, women are gonna take hold of of one man, all right. So, I mean, it, it's going to be, that's all there is to it, man. Just be diligent, you know, keep your faith, man. Hold on fast to what thou hast. And you're Gucci, man. Look at the generations of old. 
when when have when has a righteous man that you know called upon Yahweh Shemel Shai, you know prayed, fasted, and and you know was faithful? When when have they been forsaken, man? That's all there is to it, man. He's right, man. So, hey, with that, man, we want to give all praise and honor and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh, Yahweh, Say double honor to the apostles and the elders at Great Millstone for teaching this word and truth and sincerity and for ruling well. And salutations to our fellow Akim. Keep pushing, keep striving. And we almost out of here. Hey, Shalom, brothers. Shalom.